Hi, Nick Selby here. I'm an undergraduate at the George W. Woodruff School of Mechanical Engineering here at Georgia Tech. In honor of the school's 125th anniversary, I'd like to share with you some of the unique, exciting innovation we have going on here. Because if you're at Georgia Tech, you can do that. Let's take a look. I'm standing in Dr. Singhose's lab, and as a matter of fact, here he comes now. Hey Nick, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, Dr. Singhose. So, what, are, what is this? Well, of course, this is a Segway. You've seen it before. Uh -huh. um, we have a couple of these in my lab, and we use it to study, to figure out why it makes all these kind of weird motions. And most importantly, we study what kind of motions will cause people to fall over and die or get seriously injured. And who do you have working on this project? I have a number of students. I actually have some undergraduates working on it. John over here has been working on it this summer. He can come over and tell you what he's been doing. For sure. Nice to meet you, John. Good to meet you, too. Okay, so this summer we've been uh, running this segue over bumps at various speeds and various size bumps to determine at what, what speed and what size bumps the segue uh, becomes unstable and fails. Interesting. That's so cool. What else do you have going on in this lab? Well, right over here is one of the most important machines of all time. Uh, this is a big, massive crane. And there's 100 million of these in the world, and people use them for all kinds of important tasks. And in fact, I'm going to let you go ahead and drive it. I'll take the <laughs> microphone here and just drive it around, push the left and right and forward and reverse buttons. Okay. When you move these around workspaces and factories, they cause a lot of trouble because they will swing uh -huh. and run into stuff. So imagine that you're driving over there and you're trying to put your payload near that wall or something. Um, let's see what happens when you get close there. Yep. See, so you're having a problem. You, you <laughs> knock in and, and cause an accident. That could cost you $100,000. Yeah. I won't charge you today, though. Oh, thanks. That's nice of you. Well, let me show you some technology that helps people drive cranes without running into stuff. All right. So what I'm going to do here is just turn a knob, one position. And now I'm going to be able to drive this crane very easily and very accurately. And I'm going to go right over to that obstacle and stop and barely touch it. Very nice. That's incredible. Yeah, no swing out whatsoever. It's very safe. Wow. Now, this is a big, bulky control that I don't really like, so I think that we should make it a lot easier to drive, and I think we should drive it with a cell phone. <laughs> so one of my students has been developing an app for an iPhone to drive this crane around very accurately without swinging, and um, his name is Arto, and he'll tell you how he did that. All right. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out the helicopter later on if you get a chance. Okay. Will do. Thank you, Dr. Singhos. Hey, Arto. Nice to meet you. Hi, Nick. So can you explain a little bit more about this app? Sure. So in the future, we envision that every worker in a factory environment will have some sort of smart device in their pocket. And that smart dev device will control various machines. Uh, and among them, of course, a crane. So the worker will just open an app on a cell phone or whatever. And on that device, he will have a very intuitive interface coupled with that swing canceling technology to move the crane around. That is incredible. Thank you so much for showing me, Arto. Sure thing, Nick. Nice meeting you. Hey, can you tell me where uh, some of the other cranes in the lab are? Sure, Plasma's waiting for you right there. Oh, thanks. I'm here with Padma and her robotic crane. It's nice to meet you, Padma. It's nice to meet you, Nick. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yes, so this is the dual horse crane. And right now, airplanes are painted by hand, which really slows down the manufacturing process. So we can use this crane and add a robotic painting crane to it and paint the pieces of machinery really quickly and speed up the manufacturing process. Wow, very neat. Can you show me how it works? Yeah, I can. So we have an interface like this, and we can move the crane left and right like this. And up and down like this. Now, I'm also supposed to apparently see a robotic helicopter lab. Yep. Can you point me in the right direction? Yeah, it's right over there. You can't miss it. Thanks so much. It was nice meeting you, Padma. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. You too. So I'm standing in front of some sort of model aircraft for what I assume is groundbreaking research. Let's take a look. So you must be CJ? Yes. Hello, Nick. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the lab. Nice to meet you. What is this? Well, we're using this model aircraft to study how... Uh, helicopters and their flight control systems can be designed to make it easier for pilots to fly when the helicopter is carrying a heavy payload beneath it. Cool. Can you show me how it works? Sure. I'll let you take the controls. <laughs> All right. So to fly it, go ahead and spin up the thrust. And you'll use that lever to adjust the pitch of the helicopter. All right. So if I scale to it. 
All right, careful. There you go. All right, easy on the controls there. Try not to run into anything. I should probably turn this off before I break anything. All right. Thanks again, it's CJ. It's nice meeting you, Nick. Nice meeting you. I'm here in the Student Competition Center, where Georgia Tech engineering students come to apply their engineering knowledge in building things like a solar-powered race car, which competes in international and national racing competitions. Let's take a look around. So I'm here with Davis Harrison of Solar Jackets, Georgia Tech's solar-powered race car team. So Davis, what is this? So this is our first race car, SJ1 The Endeavor. We raced it last summer in Austin, Texas, and placed ninth, actually, in the Formula Sun Grand Prix. We were just ecstatic to get it out on the racetrack for the first time. But next summer, we're going to be racing in the American Solar Challenge, which previously raced from New York to Minnesota, and down the road, race in Australia from the south to the north in the World Solar Challenge. Wow, that's crazy. So how does Solar Jackets mirror the goals of the ME School? So we designed the car from the ground up and build everything from the, the carbon fiber monocoque to the suspension and machine everything ourselves using our CNC equipment and using state-of-the-art technology. How does a team like Solar Jackets build something like a solar car? So we have many different teams that will coordinate together and work to design our car uh, to take our ideas from you know the concept down to actually fabricating and getting that hands-on approach. So thanks so much for showing us around, Davis, and I'll see you on shop on Saturday. Sounds great, Nick. Thanks. So I'm standing in front of the Invention Studio. This is where Georgia Tech students go to take the theoretical knowledge that they've learned in their classrooms and turn it into hands-on engineering. Follow me. This is Gabe. He's the project manager for the Invention Studio and the Makers Club. Hey, man. How hey. you doing? Good. Can you Good. tell us a little bit what's about what's in front of us? Yeah, so this is a motorized bicycle. Um, I have one very similar to it. This one here is Josh's. Uh, he made one because he saw me riding around on one, and it's just, <laughs> it's just all too much fun. It's a great way to get around campus. And so we actually buy these kits and are able to throw them on bicycles, whether they be mountain bikes or little cruisers, whatever type you want, uh -huh. and then just kind of fly around campus. Cool. They're, really, they're really fun. We put them together here at the Invention Studio. Nice. How fast does it go? So this thing goes you know, roughly about 25 miles an hour, nice. somewhere around there after they break in. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> if you can get... I can get um, here on West Campus all the way to Tech Square in about two minutes. Oh, so man. it's much easier than walking, much no faster kidding. than walking. Cool. So can you show us some, a little bit of it? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is just a standard mountain bike. Yep. We take and we buy the 50cc motor here uh, from China, as well as it comes with everything all everything you see on the bike. So the actual yeah. um, the back sprocket, the chain, the carburetor, the gas tank, the muffler, the throttle, everything that you need. Nice. It takes about six, eight hours on a Saturday. And you, Mount your bike, fill it up with gas, and off you go. Cool. So can you show us some of the machines that you've been working with? Yeah, so a lot of this was built or made or main or modified here at the Invention Studio. Uh -huh. um, and we have a bunch of tools nice. that we use for it. Yeah, everything from our giant water jet to a bunch of laser cutters and our 3D printers. Nice. Um, most of them are housed in this back room. So if you want to follow me, I'll give you a For sure. Tour. So what are we standing in front of, Gabe? So this is the start of our 3D printer cluster. This is some of our smaller hobby printers uh, that we allow people to come in and print on for free, print whatever they want, whether it's something they found online or something they made themselves. Uh, we're working on getting a couple more of them, hopefully going to have a total of around 10 or so, so people can go online, submit their print jobs to the cluster, and then come in the next day and pick them up. That's fantastic. What are some of the cool parts you've seen people have been making? Yeah, so I've seen people make everything from small gear sets to champagne flutes and every everything in between, really. And actually, some of our guys um, working on creating some stormtrooper armors for <laughs> some of the costumes they're making. Wow. So this is this is actually an eighth of a stormtrooper helmet, uh, and it's about a 15-hour print. And they come in, they print them late at night so they can run overnight, and yep. they're slowly, slowly getting through it. I'm really looking forward to it being done. <laughs> That's amazing. Cool. Well, we'll can you show us some of the other machines you've been working with? Yeah, so some of the other stuff we have, we have giant water jet and laser cutters that are in the other rooms as well as a bunch of other machining stuff. So we can head over there now and grab All it. All right, let's do it. So Gabe, where are we right now? So we're in our water jet room, in our kind of metalworking room, and here we have our giant water jet behind us as well as our laser cutters. Uh, and 
we use these things to do everything from wood engraving to plastic cutting and giant, giant metal work. Uh, some of the stuff that we do for the bikes is we make our own sprockets. Uh, I've made my own mounts for the gas tank and for the actual motor. On the water jet before, it's a very versatile, awesome machine that can cut through three inch thick steel. So it's, it's kind of our workhorse. It's our big, big workhorse machine. That's fantastic. And actually, when we came over here to interview you, mm -hmm. you were talking to some people who are interested in trying to implement this for their own school. Why, why is that? What, what kind of standing does Georgia Tech have? Yeah, so those guys just walked in and asked us about it. Because this is the largest collegiate maker build space in the country. So we run the largest open shop. It is run and staffed by undergraduates, which is unlike anything in the rest of the country that we know of. Uh, and we get inquiries. We get probably three to four inquiries a week about people wanting to start stuff up, wanting to look at how we do it, and trying to you know, start and grow this maker movement. So we're really kind of doing something extremely special here, where we're starting and kind of getting tools and these large, large industrial machines in the hands of students who can just play around with them and learn. It's research like that that really gets me pumped about what tomorrow brings. I'm convinced that I've chosen the right place to build my Iron Man suit. So here's to 125 years at the Woodruff School, where we are doing.